What is inside black holes? How do space and time feel in there? I'm going to tell you some incredible facts from the atmosphere inside to what a black hole does to everything that falls into it. And I've saved the most exciting part for the end. When is our planet predicted to collide with one of these holes, according to scientists? What will happen then? What is a black hole? But let's go in order. What exactly is a black hole? And yes, they are not objects in the usual sense of the word, but unique regions in the structure of space-time. They have such intense gravity that even light, traveling at about 186,000 miles per second, cannot escape their boundaries. This makes them invisible and hard to study, as they emit no light or any other type of electromagnetic radiation that we could observe. The term black hole is quite figurative. From an astronomical perspective, they are more like spherical regions, whose boundaries we define as the event horizon, the point of no return beyond which everything that enters the black hole is hidden. As for their composition, there are many misconceptions. Many believe that a black hole is formed from the material of the star that collapsed, hydrogen, helium, and other elements. In reality, the matter in a black hole is compressed by gravitational forces to such an extent that the atomic and subatomic structures we are familiar with cease to exist. A black hole is a concentration of gravity, shaped by the density of its mass, and this is what creates its incredibly powerful gravitational pull. So, although we use terms like matter or composition when discussing black holes, these concepts lose their everyday meaning. Black holes are not made of matter in its usual state. They are more like radically compressed zones where gravitational forces modify the very fabric of space-time. It is a region where none of the physical laws and matter as we know them on Earth apply. The Formation of Black Holes But how do such concentrations of gravity come to be? The process of black hole formation begins with the explosion of the core of a massive star. During its active life, the star remains stable due to a delicate balance between gravitational compression and the thermonuclear pressure from reactions in its core. Hydrogen, the primary fuel, undergoes a series of reactions, turning into heavier elements, helium, carbon, and so on, up to iron in the case of the most massive stars. These reactions release a tremendous amount of energy in the form of heat, which helps offset the loss of energy through radiation and stellar winds, maintaining high pressure and preventing the star from collapsing under its own gravity. However, when the thermonuclear fuel in the core is exhausted, this delicate balance is disrupted. The star loses its ability to maintain the necessary internal pressure and begins to collapse under the force of its own gravitational pull, leading to the formation of a black hole. The mass of the star determines its fate after the end of nuclear fusion. Stars the size of our sun or slightly larger are usually destined to become white dwarfs. In these conditions, the collapse is halted by the pressure of degenerate electron gas, and the star simply fades. If the star's mass exceeds this limit, it may go through a neutron star phase where the collapse is stopped by the pressure of degenerate neutrons, and in the case of even greater mass, it collapses into a black hole. Additionally, in the centers of galaxies, black holes can form through another route. From the collapse of massive clouds of gas and dust, as well as stellar material, these processes give rise to supermassive black holes with masses millions or billions of times that of the sun. And yes, they are scattered throughout the cosmos like mines, capable of destroying anything smaller than their size. But what's inside them and what are they made of? The photon sphere of a black hole is a unique place where gravity is so strong that even light, which normally travels in a straight line, begins to orbit the black hole like cars on a roundabout. Can you imagine? This happens because the gravity of a black hole bends space so much that light rays, instead of escaping or falling into the black hole, are forced to follow a circular orbit. If a person were to be on an orbit in the photon sphere and looked ahead, they would see light coming from behind them. In essence, they would see their own back, which seems absurd and impossible in the normal world. The event horizon of a black hole is the boundary beyond which lies a region from which escape is impossible. It's what we see in movies, the edges of a giant black funnel. If anything crosses this boundary, whether it's a spaceship or light, it cannot return because it would require exceeding the speed of light, which is impossible according to the laws of physics. Inside the event horizon, all paths lead in only one direction, toward the center of the black hole, the singularity. It's like falling into a bottomless well, where the walls are too slick to grab hold of or climb back up. The Singularity So what is the singularity? 
It is the central point inside a black hole, where all its mass is concentrated, essentially the heart that holds everything together. At this point, the density becomes infinite, and the gravity so intense that even time behaves differently. The laws of physics, as we know them in everyday life, no longer apply here. To imagine what happens in the singularity, you have to picture a place where space and time cease to be what we know them as and fold into something entirely different. And as you can guess, the processes that happen there are simply impossible to study. There are theories that passing through a singularity could allow someone to enter another universe or travel through time, but this is still on the edge of science fiction and far from what modern science can fully understand. And yes, many scientists believe this is quite possible. Why not fly into a black hole? But why can't we send a probe or expedition into a black hole? What would happen if you entered one? Flying to its center is probably not the best idea if you value your life. But let's imagine the scenario. At first, a black hole will appear as a black, infinitely deep circle against the backdrop of stars. This phenomenon occurs due to gravitational lensing. The black hole bends light passing by, distorting the view of everything behind it. As you get closer, this circle begins to take on volume and appears spherical, while the distortions of space around it intensify. If there's a star behind the black hole, it might appear as if it surrounds the black hole, creating a stellar donut effect, both beautiful and terrifying. Now about possible scenarios. If the black hole is supermassive, theoretically, you could cross the event horizon without immediate catastrophic consequences. In such a hole, the gravitational force is distributed so evenly that tidal forces wouldn't be too strong until you got close to the singularity. But I would think twice before continuing that journey. If the black hole is smaller and its mass is concentrated in a more compact volume, tidal forces will become your enemy much sooner. This phenomenon is called spaghettification. An object approaching the black hole experiences such a strong difference in gravitational pull between the part closer to the hole and the part farther away that it starts to stretch. In the worst case scenario, this stretching can turn any material body, including a person, into a long, thin strand, like unfortunate Italian spaghetti being pulled out of the pot right before it hits the plate. Creepy, huh? How does this look from the outside? So your body starts resembling spaghetti, and the closer you get to the center, the more your body stretches. Eventually, this leads to being stretched and torn into elementary particles. Your adventure ends when you completely disintegrate. Therefore, there's no point in sending even equipment, as it wouldn't be able to transmit anything. For an observer remaining outside, the scenario looks even stranger. From their perspective, you would approach the black hole slower and slower, eventually appearing to stop completely at the event horizon. This happens because time near the event horizon flows differently due to extreme gravity. The light reflected from you will become redder and dimmer until it disappears completely. This is a result of redshift caused by the strong gravitational field. You would appear to hang there glowing for decades, even though nothing of you remains but simple particles. Yeah, I wouldn't sign up for such an expedition. Earth in a black hole. But what if we are already inside a black hole? The theory that our universe could be inside one is one of the most fascinating and controversial ideas in modern cosmology. According to this model, the observable universe corresponds to the interior of a black hole, and the Hubble radius, which defines the limits of the visible universe, coincides with the Schwarzschild radius, the boundary marking the event horizon of a black hole. This hypothesis suggests that all the mass of the universe is compressed to such a degree that it's in a state similar to the matter inside a black hole. The expansion of the universe, which we observe as galaxies accelerating away from each other, is interpreted in this model as motion inside a black hole, where everything falls toward its center, accelerating due to gravitational pull. The idea that the Big Bang is the beginning of the collapse of matter in our universe within the Schwarzschild radius implies that the start of our universe can be described not as an explosion in external space, but as a process of collapse inward. In this model, the curvature of space-time in a black hole creates a structure resembling a throat, which theoretically could connect our universe to other regions of space-time, or even to other universes. Sounds like good science fiction, doesn't it? However, it's worth noting that this approach is still just a theory, requiring further research and experimental confirmation, and many scientists are skeptical due to its radical nature and the difficulties in proving it. White Holes Have you heard of white holes? 
They are one of the most mysterious and controversial concepts in theoretical physics, representing a kind of mirror image of black holes. Unlike black holes which absorb everything that enters them, white holes are theorized to be sources of matter and energy from which nothing can enter, but from which matter and radiation can emerge. This concept arises from the same equations in general relativity as black holes. However, most scientists consider white holes purely hypothetical objects, as there is no reliable observational evidence for their existence. Nevertheless, the theoretical existence of white holes leads to interesting implications, such as the possibility of wormholes, cosmic tunnels that could connect different regions of space-time. Wormholes could theoretically be used for traveling vast distances through space, or even between different universes. They act as tunnels in space-time that could shorten distances, making it possible to jump from one end of the cosmos to the other in a matter of moments. However, as mentioned earlier, white holes remain hypothetical, and their formation, as far as we know, could only be associated with cosmic events occurring right after the Big Bang. Israeli astronomers Alon Redder and Shlomo Heller proposed an intriguing hypothesis linking the anomalous gamma-ray burst GRB 060614 to the manifestation of a white hole, which they call the Little Bang. It's believed that white holes could appear and instantly collapse, releasing an enormous amount of energy, resembling a miniature Big Bang. Quantum gravity also suggests the theory that black holes could eventually transform into white holes, leaving many questions about the nature of these mysterious cosmic objects. Could Earth be swallowed by a black hole? Black holes are often compared to massive cosmic vacuum cleaners, sucking in everything in their path and letting nothing escape. Though they emit no light and cannot be directly observed, we can detect their presence through the effects they have on their surroundings. When matter approaches a black hole, it accelerates and heats up, emitting powerful streams of light, which provides astronomers with clues to the location of black holes. In addition, black holes affect the orbits of nearby stars and can distort light passing by. There are stellar mass black holes, formed after the collapse of massive stars, which can be hundreds of times heavier than the Sun, yet their radius is less than 190 miles. Despite their mass, such black holes don't pose a significant threat to Earth due to their size and location. They simply lack the gravitational pull to suck in the entire planet and crush it down to the singularity. But here's the catch. There are also supermassive black holes, weighing millions or even billions of times more than the Sun, found at the centers of most galaxies, including the Milky Way. They have a major influence on the structure and evolution of galaxies. But don't worry, our solar system orbits the supermassive black hole at a safe distance. The likelihood of Earth colliding with a black hole is extremely small, although in theory, it could happen due to a cosmic catastrophe, such as the future collision of the Milky Way with the Andromeda Galaxy. Despite their potentially destructive nature, black holes play a key role in shaping galaxies and may even contribute to the birth of new stars, making them not just cosmic antagonists, but vital elements in the structure of our universe. So what do you think? Could black holes be used for time travel? Or should we stay far away from them? Share your thoughts in the comments. And yes, if you love interesting stories, know how to write scripts, edit, or voiceover videos, check out the Telegram bot linked in the description. I'd love to collaborate. Thanks for watching.